Well, you know what? There is a bipartisan effort to challenge in Congress. What's that? Is there something? There is something. (laughs) It is the recent change to the dress code. Oh, yeah. Yes. This has everyone up in arms. And finally, Republicans and Democrats are coming together to say, no, we will not allow shorts and sweatshirts on the floor of the, the Senate. Wolf, today, Democratic Senator John Fennerman gave us a jarring image. He presided over the Senate wearing a short sleeve shirt and shorts, which Republican Senator Rick Scott told me he thought was inappropriate. Tonight, a Senate known for its buttoned up image is in an uproar over this change. He's six foot eight, weighs about 270, and walks around the Senate halls with a hoodie and shorts on. And he isn't a tourist. Democratic Senator John Fetterman of Pennsylvania, whose choice of attire has forced him to vote from the doorways rather than on the Senate floor under the Senate's previous unwritten dress code, today was seen proudly wearing those casuals while presiding over the Senate. The senator from Texas. Now that Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has relaxed the dress code. Almost every Republican senator has signed a letter spearheaded by Florida Senator Rick Scott calling on Schumer to keep enforcing the code. This has got to change back. We've got to have decorum. We've got to, um, we've got to dress the way the American public would expect their U.S. senators to dress. Republican Senator Chuck Grassley saying it stinks. Senator John Kennedy saying, I don't like it. And Republican Senator Susan Collins joking, quote, I plan to wear a bikini tomorrow to the Senate floor. Some Democrats seem reluctant to criticize the change. Do you think it should be changed? I just think there's a whole lot more important things for us to worry about, so I'm fine, you know, as long as people cover all the private parts. I think you can have respect for the institution without a formal dress code, so long as individual members uh, take personal responsibility for upholding the court. But Republicans are pressing, even on the House side. Well, you're going to change all the Senate rules simply so someone could wear gym clothes onto the floor? I mean, that's embarrassing. Fetterman today firing back, saying, quote, if those jagoffs in the House stop trying to shut our government down and fully support Ukraine, then I will save democracy by wearing a suit on the Senate floor next week. And telling MSNBC on Monday. The right have been like losing their mind, you know, they're just like, oh my God, aren't there more important things we should be talking about rather than if, if I dress like a slob? Yeah, I'm, I'm torn on this. I mean, I can tell you, unequivocally, I can tell you, I don't think he should be wearing sh- what he wears all the time on the Senate floor. But having said that, is it the most important thing right now? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We have members of the United States Senate who are in support of the incitement of an insurrection against the country, who want to end democracy in the United States of America, and yet those same dipshits want to say, oh, what about decorum? Oh, good Lord, I got the vapors. I cannot handle it. Oh, he's going to wear shorts? Mm-hmm. What do you think is more important? Democratic rule or shorts and a, and a, and a dirty hoodie being worn by a guy who's going to vote on the Senate floor? D- do I wish he would wear a suit? Yeah. I think it denotes some kind of respect for the institution, for the importance of the work that they do there. If he chooses not to, I don't think it's a, a mark against his character. He just, he wants to do what he wants to do. Yeah. The, the part of it that does bother me is that the rule, uh, laxening, making lax the rules about uh, dress code only apply to him. Senate staffers still have to wear shirt and tie and jacket. Mm. So it's a little off kilter there that the, the working class individuals of the Senate, if there is such a thing, I mean, there is. I mean, people don't make a lot of money working for the Senate, uh, employees. They have to abide by a, a, a greater dress code than the sitting member of the Senate does. Yeah. So let me, I know people are going to be pissed that this is what my opinion is. I will restate it plainly. Do I wish he would wear? Yes. Is it more important than all of the host of other things? No, not at all. Those things uh, take precedence and they should be addressed. Yeah, well, and I, I did see someone say that their issue with the dress code being more relaxed is that then you'll have people like Ted Cruz trying to cosplay as every man and wearing like camo. Wearing his Bass Pro Shop hat and yeah, shit. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. then you're, you're going to have them kind of cosplaying what they pretend to be, you know, like when he grabbed the beer and at his first beer right. live on Fox News. And well, let's let's do this. Let's let's keep in mind the people who criticized it. 
And then also keep in mind the people who utilize the new rules to do whatever they want to do. Yeah. Well, and I know in that news clip, they focus primarily on Republicans, but Democrat Senator Joe Manchin, who we talk about a lot on the show, (laughs) said that he is going to issue a resolution to reinstate the dress code because it's particularly upsetting for him. Mm. And I just- Fuck you, poor kids. We got to deal with this hoodie situation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I wish that he would get just as upset about child poverty yeah. <laughs> as he does about what John Fetterman decides to wear on the Senate floor. But that that kind of goes back to this whole government shutdown and what the Republicans are focused on. And they want to reduce spending. They want to cut spending. And whenever they start talking about that, it's never about, you know, the tax cuts for rich people. They don't want to rein that in. Yeah. They want to... They want to cut things like WIC, the program that feeds hungry mothers and children. Yeah. And there is new attempts to cut WIC. It was it was increased when during the pandemic to give uh, women, children, families more food to buy necessities. And now the Republicans are seeking to cut those pandemic benefits back to basically where they were pre-pandemic. That's one of their goals in cutting spending. And in this PBS clip that I, I found, Nell Menifee Leiby was interviewed and she works in public policy and dealing with WIC and she had some important takes. Now, this clip is going to start with Republican Andy Harris during a congressional debate on funding, talking specifically about how it's a priority to cut WIC. We must work to right size programs, especially since the pandemic is over and President Biden has ended the public health emergency last month. And this is why we're returning the WIC cash value voucher benefits to a normal, sustainable, inflation-adjusted funding level. What's your response to that? Uh, The WIC benefit is pretty modest. It's not intended to supply a family's entire grocery budget for the month. And even at those inflated levels or or adjusted up levels, the fruit and vegetable benefit only supplies half of what's recommended for consumption per month. Uh, We have seen important payoffs in the nutrition outcomes as a result of those higher issuance levels. We've seen a quarter cup increase in consumption of fruits and vegetables (laughs) per day among WIC enrolled toddlers. You're a new mom, you know how hard it is to get kiddos to eat their fruits and vegetables, so that's a big deal. I think that these are important gains in public health. It's a worst, a worthwhile investment in our nation's children. And I think the idea that these are, are pandemic programs that need to be right-sized is overlooking that these are recommendations stemming from an independent panel that met in 2017 to talk about how to make the most of WIC's benefit. Now, a lot of your job these days is spent talking to lawmakers, uh, telling them about this program. What are you hearing from them? Uh, We are fortunate that WIC is a program that has enjoyed long-standing bipartisan support in Congress. There has been an agreement for nearly 30 years to provide the program with the resources necessary to serve every eligible individual who walks in the door and asks to receive WIC services. But the proposals that are currently being considered by Congress do not provide resources necessary to serve the projected nearly 7 million participants who we expect will participate in the program in 2024. Now, if WIC funding does get cut in any way or not expanded to the levels that President Biden is now requesting, how is that going to affect the state agencies that administer these funds? Yeah, unfortunately, state agencies would be in the position of having to turn away folks who would otherwise be eligible to receive WIC services. Uh, The first participants who we would see fall off of the program would be uh, non-breastfeeding new moms in the middle of a national maternal health crisis and older children who are getting ready to start kindergarten who we want to make sure are in the best possible position to be doing that. Uh, WIC hasn't had to send families to wait lists since 1997 and the gains in participation that we've seen in the last couple of years are really hard one. That is the result of good work being done on the state and local level to keep more families engaged with the program. And we don't want to see folks turn away from the program because we know that once they fall off, it's really hard to get them back. Congress needs to sustain these investments so that WIC is reaching all of the families who who would benefit from its vital nutrition services. Now, let's say this, though. I think this needs... We would be remiss if we didn't mention this, that Republicans often talk about how they would like food stamps, SNAP benefits to work. People bitch about eating steaks and seafood and whatever else that people can buy with their food stamp benefits. 
WIC is that. WIC is the way they want food stamps to work. You can only buy certain products, whole grains. This isn't an indefinite program. This is women, infants, and children only up through just past toddler age, I think. It's it's not like you're 16 and you're on WIC. This is early childhood development stuff. And again, the research bears this out. We have wildly better income uh, outcomes for children who were recipients of WIC benefits. We just, we do. So when they say that, well, let me make this about the, the abortion debate, that no, we should just want the states to be able to make the rules. We're not gonna come after this from a federal standpoint. And then what do they do? They immediately try to make it federal. No, 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 we're not going after contraception. What do they do? They immediately go after contraception. It's the same thing with this program. No, 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 WIC is great. It's, we love it because it's it's what we want the food stamp pro program to be more like. And then as soon as they get an opportunity, now let's slash it. We don't want that. They're just ghouls. That's all it is. Yeah. And I, I did a video in depth on my channel about WIC and how it is very, very limited. Yeah, great, very, very good video, a bunch of important information. Yeah, and what you say is true. I mean, it is very limited. Whole grains, beans, peanut butter, milk. You can only get the milk. Everyone's going to get upset. You can only- You grew up in Idaho. That's yeah. how they say it, milk. <laughs> you can only get very specific foods. Because as, as Nell was talking about there, it is designed to be a nutrition program. Yes.